Hey guys, welcome back to Bandit TV. Guys, we will be reacting to Jordan Peterson destroying woke Libra for 40 minutes straight. Guys, let's get straight into this. Why is society overly feminized? Well, I didn't ever say that society was overly feminized. So if we're going to discuss my views, we should use my actual word. Hmm. What is the purpose precisely? I am, I am quoting things that you said. Why? Because, what is it that because, you're trying because, to establish? Because you said that. I'm I thought we were talking about masculinity. We are. No, we're, we're not. Yes, we are. What? How are we talking about masculinity? Because I'm asking you what you think of men and of women. Isn't no, that... basically what you've been trying to do, I would say for the last 15 minutes, is put me into a sequence of corners by accusing me of various forms of misbehavior. So why are we doing that? What's the point here? These are things that you said. Uh, my That's job my as a journalist is to ask questions about what you represent and the ideas that you defend. Your, isn't your it? job is also to select the things that you might ask about in some manner that doesn't indicate a substantive bias. You picked three things to talk to me about in the last 20 minutes that were very carefully selected. Like, why did you pick those things? Because this is my job. Yeah. Should your right to freedom of speech trump a trans person's right not to be offended because in order to be able to think you have to risk being offensive i mean look at the conversation we're having right now you know like you're certainly willing to risk offending me in the pursuit of truth why should you have the right to do that it's been rather uncomfortable well i'm i'm very glad i put you on the spot <laughs> well i'm very my, glad that well, i have no, but you get my, my point speech. you get my point it's like you're you're doing what you should do which is digging a bit to see what the hell's going on so and that you, is what you should do. But I you're think, exercising think, your freedom of speech to certainly risk offending me. And that's fine. I think more power to you as far as I'm concerned. So you haven't sat there and... I'm just trying, I'm just trying to work that out. I mean... Ha, gotcha. You have got me. You have got me. Hmm. Maybe you just think that women should be equally represented in the decision-making fora of our nation. Maybe that's really just about having proper equality in a body that's meant to be representative. Well, I do believe that women should have... I, I don't understand your question, I well, guess. Well, I guess you <laughs> yeah. don't. That's pretty I obvious, don't. unfortunately. Well, how about if you phrase it more clearly instead of just insulting me? <laughs> look, 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 look at it this way. Let's talk about quotas for a minute. So there's a, a very wide array of jobs that are fundamentally uh, done by men. So, for example, member of parliament, ninety nine point nine percent. I'm sorry, Alex, I'm going to stop sledging you now. I promise. I, I'm happy to give my minute to Jordan. Ninety nine point nine percent of bricklayers are men. Should we have quotas for women? Is bricklaying representative democracy? That has nothing to do with the question. The question is if, 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 if there's evidence of structural inequality and oppression because women aren't precisely represented at 50% in all professions at all levels, then why don't we have a conversation about having women represented in all professions at all levels? Well, we why do we talk about the C-suite, for example? Why do we talk about politics and positions of power? Why don't we talk about it across the board? Okay, so so that's my idea of the patriarchy, which is a, a system of male dominance of society. Yeah, but that's not my sense of the patriarchy. So what's, what's yours? Well, in what sense is our society male dominated? Uh, the fact that the vast majority of wealth is owned by men, the vast majority of capital and is owned by men. Women do more unpaid it's a very, labor. a very tiny proportion of men and a huge proportion of people who are seriously disaffected are men. Most people in prison are men. Most people who are uh, on the street are men. Most victims of violent crime are men. Most people who commit suicide are men. Uh, most men, most people who die in wars are men. People who do worse in school are men. It's like, where's the dominance here precisely? What you're doing is you're taking a tiny substrata of hyper successful men and using that to represent the entire structure of, the, of Western society. There's nothing about that that's vaguely appropriate. But I could say equally well that most rape victims are women. You know, terrible things happen to people of both sexes. And you could say that with, with, with perfect utility, but that doesn't provide any evidence for the existence of a male-dominated patriarchy. Well, there it are... just means that terrible things happen to both genders, which they certainly do. But there are almost no women who rape men, ah! for example. So that <clears throat> is an asymmetry <clears throat> there in sexual violence. Guys. No, like I feel this is a an ideology that we passed on from like 
it's been passed on but it's false like women actually do rape men like that is stupid for the fact men don't take it as rape per se when it happens they just think nah i just hate that but women actually rape men like i've spoken with like three of my friends and they lost their virginity to their like let's say elder older aunties or older ladies who stayed with them like it wasn't really like they didn't force you but manipulation was involved and just come and do like it was more of a rape like it's a rape i don't know how to put it but women actually do rape men just for the fact that men don't come out and say it does not mean it does not happen so this idea of women don't rape men is actually very very stupid i must say like i must say for the fact that we don't play beat it when it happens or we don't take it as rape let me say that but like it happens and so men actually go through some psychological issue and they have to visit therapy for them to recover but most men just take it as it is but women actually do rape men like we need to put it out there like it's well yes there's an as there's an asymmetry in all sorts of places but that doesn't mean that western culture is a male dominated patriarchy the fact that there are asymmetries has nothing to do with your basic arguments i want to know what is your answer uh to young people for some of the really big uh, uh, problems facing humanity, like the you know, climate catastrophe, like economic crisis, like the precarious job market. Because they just don't, like you talk all this much about uh, individual responsibility. Most of us are never going to be able to afford uh, to have all of these assets to have responsibility over. So what is your advice beyond banal comments like clean your room? Well, you know, it's actually rather difficult to answer a question that ends with your comments are banal politely and so you know I, I would i would consider that more of an opinionated personal and political statement than actually a question so why don't you try reformulating that so that there's an actual question there <laughs> what is your So what is your advice to young people when you talk about you need to be individually responsible, but when there are things that are so far out of our control, like climate catastrophe, like the precarious job economy, like you know, the They're economic crisis, what, what, is, what, is, what is your answer to you people who are you're facing worse off these than questions? Your, do you think that you're worse off than your grandparents? I think there are different challenges. Do you think you're worse off than your grandparents? I think uh, that Jordan, once again, we're not going to cross-examine our questions. Fundamentally, <laughs> I'm a psychologist, and my experience has been that people can do a tremendous amount of good for themselves and for the people who are immediately around them by looking to their own inadequacies and their own flaws and the things that they're not doing in their lives and starting to build themselves up as more powerful individuals. And if they're capable of doing that, and then they're capable of expanding their career. And if they're capable of expanding their career and their competence, then they're capable of taking their place in the community as effective leaders. And then they're capable of making wise decisions instead of unwise decisions when it comes to making collective political yeah. decisions. I'm not suggesting decision. in the least and have never suggested that there's no domain for social action. I'm suggesting that people who don't have their own houses in order should be very careful before they go about reorganizing the world, which happens in many ways. Why do you feel that someone's personal gender identity and pronouns infringes your free speech? Can one not also argue based on your interpretation that professors can use racial slurs in their classroom um, and the, that the inability to do so would violate their freedom of speech? There's a difference between saying that there's something you can't say and saying that there are things that you have to say. And I regard these made up pronouns, all of them, as the neologisms of radical PC authoritarians. Do you understand that? And I don't, I'm not a fan of that sort of person. And the reason I'm not a fan of that sort of person is because I've done my homework. I've read everything I can get my hands on in the development of authoritarian political systems, and I know the literature inside out and backwards. And I am not going to be a mouthpiece 
for language that I detest. We had that series of statements from you. Speaking clearly is one of your 12 rules. Mm -hmm. And I wonder why it is that in a situation like that and in many other situations, what actually happens is that you sow confusion. Mm, I don't sow confusion. The journalists that interview me sow confusion. Well, the woman think, who wrote the New York Times article. Why do you think that happens, article. that, oh, that for you her, get misinterpreted in your views so oh, often? With her, it was absolutely clear. I spent two days with her, and we spent 30 seconds talking about enforced monogamy, and she's a very smart woman, and she knew exactly what I meant and chose to make that the centerpiece of the article for, for I would say, to attract attention in a way that was completely inappropriate. But you know it's not just the journalist from the New York Times. You know that this happens over and over and over. That's because the journalists read each other's journalism okay, and they don't so, read the so books the fault, and they the don't watch what I'm saying. Never with you, the fault well, is... Well, no, the yeah. fault is sometimes with me. I mean, okay. it's not right. like I every I always say everything perfectly. But there's there's no... It's, I mean, it's getting dull to read the journalistic accounts because they're just mirror images of everything that's been written over the last year and a half. And the same old things. There's 10 epithets that are generally thrown at me, every one that you can possibly think of. And people have gone over everything I've said to my students for the last 30 years, almost all of which is recorded, and found absolutely no evidence for any of that, even once. I would say that there is a lot online of, of journalists actually trying to interview ser use, uh, seriously, trying to get towards a, a proper understanding. And that, what you just said to me, is a, is a very common thing you say. I've been over the evidence, there is no evidence anywhere. It's it isn't easy, just me that's been over well, the evidence, it's, it's people that have been, say, take, yeah. been, it, been trying to take me out who've been over the evidence and have not been able to find any. Um, I do stand by my original statement though that there's a brand of more radical feminism that, that insists that our culture is best characterized as an oppressive patriarchy and I think that first of all that that's an appalling sociological doctrine and I think it has very negative psychological effects and they won't be limited to men because in, if it's true that there's something toxic let's say about masculinity per se what that will ine inevitably mean is that as women adopt more masculine roles traditionally what is that toxicity somehow going to go away? But that's a so straw man because no one says there's anything toxic about masculinity per se. What do you mean no one says that? The, the term that. exists. No. Well, no they How put, is that a straw a man? Well, but where did the term a, come from? It's a phrase from? that's used about forms of masculinity that are harmful to men and women. It's not about masculinity per se. You must know that. I read the American Psychological this. Association guidelines for the treatment of boys and men and I know perfectly well that this is no strong man, straw man. Why do you think it is that so much of what you say is so very popular with hmm. the alt-right? It isn't, and you don't have any evidence for that at all. Uh, well, any I'm, more than the I'm evidence that alt-right people Daily watch Stormer, this show. Daily Stormer, Neonite yeah. website, That's savior the one of Western I'm going civilization. On. <laughs> oh, well, there was, that was all taken apart today by a number of Jewish publications, by the way, showing that, first of all, that was all satirical commentary on the part of the alt-right, directed at taking me down, for example. And there was an alt-right article yesterday published saying that I was a Jewish stooge and shill. So well, this is absolute nonsense, and I don't, uh, I, I don't appeal primarily to the alt-right. There's no evidence for that at all. It's the, it's the no, proclivity of... I never said, I never said, pro, pro, I never said primarily, yeah. um, Jordan. What I'm interested in is why you think that you get the reaction that you do from the alt-right, looking at, you know, the Kathy Newman documentary. Uh, what doc reaction? The, the inter interview. There's 10 there million people lot, watched that awful, and commented awful, on it. I'm, I'm talking about what I saw, mm. and I'm curious to know what your reaction was to the, to the, to the glee with which the alt-right seized upon uh, that well, I don't shall accept we, Shall we the, deal with the death threats? I mean, she had, yeah, I think, a dozen I don't accept the concept that it was the alt-right that was doing this. There were 10 million people who commented on that video, and about 95% of them commented negatively on Kathy Newman's behavior. You think there's 10 million alt-right trolls watching that? A trans woman is a real woman. <laughs> I don't really like the way those questions are formulated. Now, I don't know what that means. What do you mean a real woman? Well, <laughs> I'm asking you, in your mind, you know, it depends what you think a real woman is, but do you think a trans woman is a woman? No. Why not? Because I think that women are capable, generally speaking, of having babies <laughs> and they have female genitalia and they have an XX chromosome. And 
I look at the studies and I'm really also very much interested in studies uh, like the analysis that was done by um, the American Psychological Society which looked at 45 analysis of se whether there's sex difference over 20 years and its conclusion was that men and women are basically alike in terms of personality, in terms of cognitive ability, in terms of leadership but what it did find was that media depictions of men and women as fundamentally different perpetuate misconceptions as does workplace. Men and women actually are more the same than they are different but the issue is is that small differences at the population level can turn into very large differences at the extreme so for example men and women are broadly similar with regards to aggression although men tilt a little bit more towards aggression about so that if you picked a random person out of the population male and female and you guessed that the male was more aggressive you'd be right 60 percent of the time but if you take the one in a hundred most aggressive people they're all male and that's why the overwhelming proportion of people who are in prisons are male now do you want to equalize that just out of curiosity I what about bricklayers they're 99 percent male and the f and we've got about three quarters of of the population now in universities in the humanities and social sciences are female yeah. are we going to equalize that and men, men work more longer hours, they work more dangerous jobs, they're more likely to move, they're more likely to work outside, they're more likely to participate in jobs in the STEM fields that are scalable, they make more money for those reasons, and that's all hidden under the idea that the reason that men and women make different amounts of money is because of their gender. It's a very simplistic analysis. Guys, if only be honest, Jordan Peterson is the GOAT, like, he is the GOAT, like, I love when I listen to him, I love when he talks about stuff that some people who are supposed to have basic sense don't, like, I'll be honest, because that sometimes you're supposed to understand, there are some questions that are being asked to him that, on a normal day, you're supposed to get it, sometimes he's like, how can you be asking me such a question, but like, I love the way he comes back, he comes back, in a very respectful way like he does not insult you but he gives you the answer and you, and you think about your life like you think about am i sure okay like why would i ask such a stupid question but like i enjoyed it tell me if you did too guys i should like share subscribe my channel i'll see you next time guys